So they told you to watch Antagma when you want to learn Houdini, huh? So you want to switch to Houdini or simply add it to your toolkit and you don't know where to start. Look no further. This is your quick start to understanding the basics of Houdini. We assume you know a bit of 3D and have a broad understanding of how 3D CGI works, having worked in traditional apps like Blender, Cinema 4D or Maya. And I personally struggled massively when starting Houdini. It actually took me three attempts to finally stick with it. In my opinion, the first six weeks will be the hardest. So keep this in mind. With Houdini, you're learning a totally new language. A language which isn't like anything else you've seen in your other DCCs. In many ways, Houdini is actually more similar to an IDE, an integrated development environment for 3D content. And I'm saying this to motivate you. When you're starting to learn Houdini, you will hit walls. That's absolutely natural. Just try not to get too angry and not too frustrated within those first weeks. Because hitting a wall oftentimes means learning something. So where did Houdini come from? Well, it turns out it's not like your standard DCC, your digital content creation app. Houdini is more about the underlying principles. So you will have a lower chance of getting a shot done by just hitting random buttons and trying to wing it. Instead, if you get some idea about the underlying basics of 3D and CGI, that's really great. And it'll help you a lot when you're starting out in Houdini. Houdini, in my opinion, started out basically as a toolkit for building tools, in turn to build 3D content. However, by now it's been augmented so much as that it covers all the bases of your traditional DCC app, and even more. However, it's still particularly useful and well-suited to building procedural, generative tools. And thus, you might still want to keep your standard DCC app on the side to take care of most of the mundane tasks, such as hard surface modeling or rendering. And don't get me wrong, we will cover rendering in those five-minute intros here. It's just one of the last areas that I personally touched inside of Houdini. So you're firing up Houdini for the first time, and you're confronted with this massive program. What is it? Well, to understand it better, let's look at its individual modules, the so-called contexts. After starting Houdini, this is what you're confronted with. The standard layout in what's called the build desktop. So if you're in some weird other configuration, you might want to head up here and choose build. As I mentioned, Houdini can be seen as an operating system, stringing together different modules, which are called contexts. And the main area where you can switch between those contexts is here. And this area here is quite important, because that's the area where you're building your node trees. And above that, you have your parameter area, where you set up parameters for the individual nodes. Also, you got your main viewport with the usual alt navigation, so holding down alt and pressing the left mouse button rotates, pressing the right mouse button zooms in and out, and pressing the middle mouse button just translates. But let's get back to these modules here. So this is how you could look at Houdini, being an operating system stringing together those individual contexts here. And within this operating system, each of those contexts would be a certain application, an app, working on a certain type of data. For example, the IMG context would work on two-dimensional images or the OBJ context would work on geometry data. And there are quite a few contexts here, because Houdini is able to work on quite a few different types of data. However, in our five-minute intro tutorials, we'll be focusing on these three contexts here, OBJ, MAT, and OUT, with OBJ standing for the context that's working on geometry data. So what we're going to do in here is procedural modeling, geometry building, setting up lights and cameras. Then there is the MAT context, which is working on material and shader data. So we'll set up materials and shaders in here, which then we'll render using the out context, which works on scene descriptions for rendering them. And within each of those contexts, those individual applications, you're going to use nodes to build a node tree to tell those applications what to do with the data running through them. And up front, I just want to mention a few special nodes and a few special subnetworks that exists within a geometry network in the OBJ context, namely the simulation and the particles, which live in a DOPnet, DOP stands for dynamic operators, and the popnet, which stands for particle operators. And by this icon here, the same icon, you can see those are basically the same kind of subnets here. So those will be used to build dynamic simulations, enabling you to simulate rigid bodies, soft bodies, smoke fire, and hair, for example. And also, as we are using individual nodes that are mini programs to manipulate data within these individual contexts, there's another low-level way to create those individual nodes, which is using scripting, either through VOPs, VEX operators, which is a visual kind of scripting using nodes, or VEX, Houdini's built-in language to build those nodes and to manipulate data, which is a C-style language. And the nice thing about both VOPs and VEX is that they are not tied to the OBJ context, but they are available in most other contexts as well, being able to manipulate other types of data, as for example two-dimensional images or sound waves. And VOPs is a visual node-based representation of VEX, so anything that can be programmed in VEX can also be set up using nodes in VOPs. So do you have to learn VEX in order to be able to use Houdini? The answer is definitely no. However, if you want to use Houdini's full potential, I suspect there might be no way around VEX. 
as in my opinion is the single most determining factor that unlocks most of Houdini. And also in contrast to most other operators, VEX works in most contexts. So most of those contexts we see up here have some sort of a VEX scripting area. So learn VEX once and you'll be able to use it all throughout Houdini. That being said, in our 5 minute videos, we try not to use VEX as far as possible, not to scare you away. If you like what we're doing and want to support us or want to gain access to more in-depth courses, we're super happy if you decide to support us on Patreon. And we want to thank all of our patrons, especially Joseph Howerton, Nick Nick, Chris Hebert, Rafik Anadol, Patrick Fillion, Important Looking Pirates, Encore VFX, NetherRealm Studios, and Francois Bayajon. Thanks so much, guys.